and welcome back to another episode of your favorite real estate podcast. We are your hosts. I'm Taisha Renee. I'm Ashley LeRae. And I'm River the Realtor. And it's Wednesday. Yes. My favorite day of the week. Pump day. Y'all already know how we're coming. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get right into it today, y'all. We're going to start off with our peak. <laughs> And a pit, mm-hmm. our new segment. You so let's let right. the people know what's good in your life and what's bad. I got a good one. Okay. Go I'm going to Paris. Yes. You are. In London and hopefully Milan. Maya, if you're watching this, I still want to go to Milan. You bring um, me a souvenir? Of course I am. Yay. We are going to see Beyonce. Um, a really, really good friend of ours got us some tickets. Um, so yeah, I we're just that. making oh it shake. I've never been, so I'm excited. I got to wait till August to see her. But um, Where's she coming to? Atlanta? Yeah, in August. She going in May. Yeah. I've already seen her. Y'all know how I feel. I don't like concerts. <gasps> well, I'm going to Europe. Wow. That was I know more. that's right. I know that's right. Busy. No, yeah. I'm excited. Busy. If I had to go, if I could That'd go to so Europe. That would be so fun. Yeah, yeah. I like seeing her overseas that versus the States. Yeah, yeah. that's going to be a big difference. difference. Yeah. That would so. be so funny if they were singing her songs in French. <laughs> <laughs> and then you don't even I'm know what's going you on. don't like my song in French like I know French I'm like, oh, that's like anyway uh, so I think that's that. my peak I'm excited I haven't had like a at least I don't think I've had like a real real vacation this year so far mm-hmm. yeah. um, so I'm excited about that and my cousin's getting married when I get back from Paris so oh, I'll nice. be out for some time um, my pit my pit is that we're I've gotten into a couple situations that are giving me like 2021 real estate and I don't like it. Mm. Emailing me about 30 offers on one property, I don't mm. like that. Emailing yes. me about highest and best, I don't like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't like it. Don't like and that's honestly that. my pit. Pits of hell. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was so I'm real mad because I'm mad. That's where it should go. To I'm the mad. Pits of hell. Okay. Yeah. So. Mm. You're going to win them though. We don't care who, who right. are. But I did it. it. Oh, uh, but you will. It next, might fall next through. Time, next time. You actually know who won the offer on the house? Who? Ari Ellsbury. Shout out to her. I did on her like, I should have known. That is so funny. <laughs> That's funny. Dang. I go love ahead. that. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I'll say a, a peak for me. Actually, I won a multiple offer situation today, there but that go. wasn't going to be my peak. She I, said slight flex. She uh, said, but that one, that one. But that was slight. I just thought flesh. about when you said that. I've been feeling like really grateful. Like in the past two weeks, I've gotten over a million in contract. <sighs> okay. Under contract. Look, and I can't ooh, I'm going to start speaking it. of it. <laughs> I've been so excited, not just for myself, but for my clients. Like my clients, every house they went into, like, you ever just watch them as soon as they walk in, they're like, this is this it. This is it. It's yeah. such a good feeling. It's such a good feeling. So that's been my peak. Um, Actually flexing on this. Yeah, yeah I, I got love to. It. Just I love a little it. bit. Just I love it. Bit. I'm just waiting on my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. This is your Yo, mom. She is so you got her moment a couple weeks ago. This is your mom. Yeah, let me pop it. Okay, um, what's your pit? You give us two pieces um, if that's what you want. My pit, I'm trying to think of one. Um, Give us two weeks. Don't man, force right? it. Like we say, yeah. don't force it. Yeah. If life or, is good, life is good. I guess I'll tell the peak. I mean, the pit. I told y'all a couple weeks ago, I think, um, on my old Jeep, I got to get a new engine. But we just told you to get a new car. Yeah. At that point, I might as well. Yeah, the engine is the car. Before you pay $13,000, no, I need to sell more too, houses. That's how I ended up with my <laughs> Jeep because my Hyundai went out. Yeah, mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah. What's mm-hmm. My peaks. Okay, I can say my peak is, you know, like when you get settled in your house, now you start like doing like more things around yeah. the house. Like yeah. I'm outside with the flowers, like putting okay, bolts curb down. Okay, curb appeal. Get curb my appeal, appeal. right. You know what I'm saying? We, I'm just doing stuff outside. I love it because the wow. sun's out. I'm just mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm so happy. Y'all know Taisha is like an outside girl. I'm she outside love it girl. I'm a country girl. Y'all never forget Baby, it. Baby, I walk out my front door like, oh, my God. Uh, yeah. The sun is outside. I'm itching to go outside. I'm like, I got to go outside and do something. I will walk around my community. River called me one day. She was like, what you doing? I'm like, I'm just walking around the community. <laughs> and you see, I'm on the phone like, for what? Oh, I just brother. have to, the sunlight, I love it. Girl, I, I open it. up them curtains, I'll be in my living room like, <laughs> sun baby, mm-hmm. on the couch. Like, mm-hmm. that's not going to happen. I get stressed at work, but let me, let me go outside and take a walk. Mm-hmm. And I come back bright as ever. I cannot. Um, <laughs> no, can't relate. My pit? <laughs> what is my pit? <sighs> I'm going to get something. Wow. I yeah, love that I love for y'all us. lives. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have one. Period. I feel like I never have one. That's I'm just. Good. I try to be positive. Though. I'm very optimistic. You are. That's I will good. say that. Yeah. So I should get hit by a car and be like, "Look, peak of that is that <laughs> I'm alive. I'm walking. Like, no, I'm, I'm alive. Like, 
I'm about to get paid because I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't got head, like, I don't look at this as a okay. downtime. Y'all are so funny. I love that. Very much half, that's half full. Yeah. Yes, that's what it is. I can't think of them. So Everybody needs that one friend. Yeah, that's how you should. For sure. I'm going to complain. You hear me? And I'm coming right behind you. <laughs> I'm going to be like, ladies, ladies. No, no seriously. <laughs> These are real conversations. Okay. That yeah. That so but seriously, as you guys can see, Nika <laughs> is missing this week. That's our. That's our, that's, that's our pit. That's our oh, pit. Damn. That's my no, pit. Nika, we love you. I'm going to say that's our pit. Yeah, that's, our, that's our pit. That's our overall pit is Nika's not here with us. Family things. Again, keep her in your prayers. She'll be back next week for yeah, sure. Yeah, because my energy yeah. down. Was she not here? First, I I'm know. I'm telling you, like you interview on one is only we, one person. Yeah. No. I'm talking about bonjour. 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 We, we. W. <laughs> we love you. Love you, Nico. <laughs> but no, guys. But today's episode is going to be about difficult deals because mm. not every transaction is going to be smooth. Not every transaction is going to be easy. There's many things that can cont- contribute to that. But today, we're going to talk about how we deal with difficult deals with difficult partners i.e. your attorneys it might be a lender it might be the other realtor on the other side of the transaction Mm -hmm. we're going to talk about our personal situations that we may have gone through and how we overcome them yeah, I'm so trying we to want to take the floor first and give me the juicy <laughs> stories. Don't give us the dry. Are we coming stories. out the gate with the stories? Yeah, we coming mm. out the gate. Okay, I'll go. <laughs> I got so many. John Tucker. <laughs> no, look. Um, honestly, I had a deal recently, y'all. That when I say everything that could go wrong did go wrong, and like me as a realtor, my job is obviously to combat where I can. You know, also try to keep all parties as up to date with everything and mm-hmm. as calm as possible. Um, one thing I am is I'm very realistic, right? I'm a people's person, especially when it comes to the business that we're in. Like mm-hmm. some stuff is just out of our control. Mm-hmm. As realtors, we know that. However, sometimes people on the upset end of the table don't care. So on a deal yeah. I just had, um, my client was just getting thrown mucking riches. Like literally every single thing, like it was a, a caveat to that. Oh, we need this. Oh, we need that. And he is producing these documents time and time and time again. And it was just delaying closing. Mm-hmm. This lady is like, the lender's even saying like, I've never seen them ask for so much documentation, but he's being very responsive. We're very on point. We have these conditions to clear. She's like, oh, well, I don't care. Like, um, this is going on too long. Mind y'all, the house was on the market for 64 days. But anyway, mm. Girl, you ain't it's no already rush. been too long. The first thing she goes, well, if y'all want us to, um, you know, keep going with the contract, River, you need to um, give up your, your broker bonus. Pardon? We want the money back since y'all can't get it together. Like, just little stuff, like Try picking it. at me, like, mm. just kind of doing stuff. And I think it's very easy. Y'all know I'm from Chicago. It's very easy for me to like <laughs> get snappy with people back, but you know, then you run the risk of ruining the whole deal for everybody. It just be a lot. It's really the emotional piece for me. Like mm-hmm. maintaining people's attitudes, maintaining people's lack of understanding. It just be a lot. And mm-hmm. I think that's probably like, that's my bad experience. Like agents who just can't get with the program, control their emotions and just mm-hmm. be realistic. How did you handle it? Just let it ride? I'm going to be honest. I, I allow her to get her grievances out without being combative because that's all I could do, right? Mm-hmm. I think the biggest takeaway from that is like sometimes, especially when you're in a position where you can't control the situation, the best thing you can do is say, I hear you, I understand you, I'll do everything moving forward to alleviate those issues and then walk away from it, right? Mm-hmm. What I wanted to say looked nothing like that. It looked mm-hmm. a little something more chief key fish right <laughs> um but i just kind of had to realize again we're in a professional setting even though it's an emotional game you got to know when to when to walk away from stuff and when mm-hmm. to just say you know what i heard you i got you i'm a i'm a exit stage did it close did the deal close are we still waiting no did it is it under contract still no really <laughs> but oh we trying God. to get it back under contract like, at the same house yes it's oh a lot like, it's just yeah. an overwhelming situation Mm-hmm. Oh my God. But you know what it sounds like to me? You acted in the best interest of your client. Yes, and you took out, you know, you took away a river from Chicago. Yeah. And, and replaced that with river, the river. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. And so that's a lesson. You got to act in the best interest yes. of your client. Put your emotions aside, mm-hmm. your feelings aside, and do what's the best for the business. Yeah. For exactly. your client. And that's exactly mm-hmm. what you did. So ain't nothing wrong with that. Hopefully that's y'all great. go back on the contract. Hopefully she act right. Hopefully she get my broken okay. bonus back. I'm yeah, pull up stop her. playing. <laughs> she snatched it like T.I. did Lauren London. No, oh, she's broke literally. I'm like, we got the She like, no. Nah. I'm about to say, no. Nah, nah. Yeah, it'd be great. Oh, my God. Okay, what about you, Ashley? Give me one of your stories. Oh, man. I had this one deal. Y'all, we were under contract. It felt like for six months. I swear. It was a mess. Um, it was one of the deals where my client, um, unfortunately, lost her earnest money. And at that point, 
Let's get into that. Yeah, let's Man. get into that. So, and, wh- and what does losing your earnest money mean? For somebody who um, might not know. So your earnest money deposit, that's basically a deposit that you um, submit once you're under contract, or once your offer gets accepted. That earnest money deposit, it's like a, uh, basically a deposit to kind of secure the home and show that you're serious about mm-hmm. moving forward with the purchase. Um, and typically your earnest money is like 1% of the purchase price. So... It was a condo. So y'all, y'all know condos are really tricky to Mm -hmm. close. Um, It was a really nice unit downtown. And I think I remember this deal. Is this the deal that I'm thinking about? (sighs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So it was a great, it was a great space. Um, But when I saw who the listing agent was, that's when I was a little worried. (laughs) Um, The listing agent is like a a friend of a friend. Let's say that like we have relationships and usually it's like fun when you co-op with someone who you, who you know. But um, I think also what it could have been maybe because like I had a newer license and that, that other agent was a little more seasoned. Mm -hmm. So it felt like the other agent was almost trying to like school me and like felt like they could I don't want to say take advantage but like they had more loopholes let's just say that like um so yeah it was a lot but long story short there were a lot of issues with the HOA in the condo Mm -hmm. um what the lender needed to close on the deal the seller and the listing agent couldn't provide we tried getting it ourselves like every way that we could and it just wouldn't work um and we were almost at closing and um something came up with the HOA oh they did a what do you call it um, an assessment like where the HOA was going up. And I mean, mm. like drastically. So they were trying to push us to close because the seller didn't want to pay those extra mm. fees. Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> yeah, it was a mess. I mean, not, like we switched lenders. We switched lenders three times. We used two of my lenders. They were like, this deal's dead. So <laughs> no, we then switched. Like, right like, when, I, when you got to start switching lenders, that's when you know it's a problem. So we used two of my <laughs> lenders. They were like, nah, this is dead. Um, we ended up using the listing agent's lender. And that's when I feel like things started getting sticky. Because I'm like, are y'all in cahoots? Like, what's going on here? Yeah. Like, not are y'all in cahoots. Yeah, something just wasn't right. And like I said, it primarily had to do like with the HOA. They could not provide the proper documents. Um, so we ended up terminating. And somehow in the termination, there was a lot going on. But they tried to take my client's earnest money. Mm-hmm. Um, and it wasn't a lot. So I was pretty confident. Like, honestly, like, you can let him have it because clearly he's sick. He just need the he just need the funds like we can get it back with another deal at that point. I so that. it was just a lot. Um, and the listing agent did not make it any better. I'll say that. I think you brought up something good, though. You kind of talked about the battle we face, you know, as, as newer, newer agents, agents versus yeah. the more seasoned agent. Mm-hmm. They look at their license number and like, oh, if you yeah. got a four uh, in front of your license uh-huh. number, you are not getting the respect you deserve. Yeah. yeah. And that just means you're newer. But definitely, like, how do you feel like you? I guess like combat. Well, new, how did you be like, yeah, I'm new, but I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, I was, I really felt like I had to like stand my ground. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt like I said, I feel like there was a lot going on. Like they were trying to maybe get over with the HOA. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I cannot say that I did not try my hardest with my client. Like we were under contract for a very long mm-hmm. time. Yeah. I'll say that. Um, and I mean, I think the house still is in on market. That was like a year ago. Oh, girl. <laughs> or maybe it expired but the house was on the market for a very long time yeah. and every lender that's how I just know it wasn't me because every lender literally said like you should be fine terminating because no one can buy this house y'all yeah. unless it's a cash buyer y'all don't have no documents no one can buy this it's not your fault yeah I had to learn that I, I was taking it personally especially when her earnest money was at risk mm-hmm. um but yeah it I just feel like I you, went some, I had to do, you know she ended yeah. up finding a much better place and we close right on time Perfect. So that's all that matters. Yay. And she well, got her money back. Heck yeah. Oh. Look at that. From somebody the else. The devil will never win. The devil will never win. <laughs> yeah, that's why that list is in there. <laughs> anyway. You're shady, the- bro. <laughs> she <laughs> is, bro. Um, I think my... Y'all know most of my deals are new construction. So yeah. mine deals usually like pretty smooth. Mm-hmm. But my one deal... It was actually my first house I got under contract. When I first got my license. So this is what? 2021? Mm-hmm. My first house I got under contract and the list agent was amazing. She was great. We were on one accord, the lender. And this is why we always preach work with our preferred partners. I mean, granted at that time, I didn't really have preferred partners. Yeah. I got people that, anybody. Right. People that my brokers recommend. Okay. Mm-hmm. But yeah. this is somebody she found on Google or something. And he loved the Google best lenders in town. Okay. Crazy. That's Girl, boy, look up uh, okay. bad Chantel. I might pay. pop up if I put it in there like... <laughs> I know when you talk to him and you think he on it, like they can talk a good game. I'm like, okay, okay, let's get it done. The day of closing, y'all, 
we're headed to closing. We're in my, the the listing agent actually called me. She was like, I don't think we're closing today. I was like, why, why? not? She, I think she said, she was like, well, I'm on the way. Something <laughs> wasn't given to the attorney. And I the didn't know. They didn't even tell me. It wasn't even uh, the pack. It was something with the HOA because it's about the HOA. Oh, I'm sorry. So whatever always happened is because I don't think we're closed. I'm like, hold on. I just talked to the, you know, the uh, lender. He's like, everything's all good. I called him back. He was like, yeah, no, we're not closing today. Uh, I said, when are you serious you tell right me now? That? When were you going to tell me that? This went on for three close, three, three dates, y'all. Wow. We kept extending it every closing day. It was just, Ooh. we're not closing today. What? We're not closing today. And he was getting an attitude with me as if I was in the wrong. But you know <laughs> me, sir, this is not my job. You need to get done what you need to get done. But being who I am, I went and Googled. It was something about the HOA being over, you know, that limit that they have for um, restrictions or no, for uh, oh, delinquents. Like it, delinquents. Oh, delinquents all yeah. Yeah. That's what my yeah. issue was. They were over yeah. that percentage. Mm-hmm. So there was a deal in that neighborhood that had literally just closed through and that's what another lender. Mm-hmm. I called that lender, like, hey, like, can you get this one to close? And he was like, you know, let me try it out. He got it to close. He was like, that's the last house I'm closing over there. Oh, <laughs> my seriously. gosh. I was was like, this house in Cobb County? No. Oh, it was okay. in Cascade. Oh, okay. Cascade. Uh-huh. Super delinquent one over there. Yeah. Uh-huh. He uh-huh. was like, that's uh-huh. the last house I'm closing. I don't know what it was, but he said that's the last house he was closing. Wow. That deal stressed me out. I We were under contract. I think we went under contract in like maybe April. We didn't close till like June. Mm. all because of a bad lender, bad communication. And he kept trying to put the blame on me, kind of putting it in my my client's head that it's the realtor like girl you know it's not me come on now luckily I build these relationships with my clients Mm -hmm. but with him of course I had to check him out here how I knew I am like Mm -hmm. of course after I go to my mentor (laughs) like what should I say like you know what's going on Mm -hmm. but I had to go to him and just like keep it like these are the facts this is what needs to be done this is what you're not doing we're gonna go to somebody else he was so pissed yeah. That I took her to another lady. You can't get the job done. So somebody else does. It's what you gotta wow. do. And all things that you do, regardless of how difficult it is, you just have to act in the best interest of your client and do what's best for them. So one day, you know, don't end up don't losing their earnest money. If they do, you get it back. Yeah. yeah. I think one common oh. theme that I keep seeing amongst these stories, no matter if it's the lender or the list agent, is like we're always being put in a predicament where you can get out of character or where your emotions might get the best of you, or where you just find yourself doing things that may not be be in alignment with who you are professionally. Mm-hmm. I think the biggest also like similarity with these stories is like we all had to take a step back, assess, mm-hmm. make a decision off of that, off of what was best for the situation and the client, not off how we feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think when it comes to dealing with difficult partners or difficult anything in real estate, it's taking a step back from that situation to look and think objectively before reacting. Like my mm-hmm. mom always says, it's better to be proactive than reactive. Mm-hmm. And like if you react off the dime, like real estate will have you like slamming people on mm-hmm. the ground. Like yeah, you have to right. really take a step back and be like, all right. Mm-hmm. How can I fix this? And how can I also like, you know, not go to jail? Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I feel like as a new agent, you have to keep in mind that the industry is so small mm-hmm. that you always want to be professional, no matter how difficult the other person may be. You never want to. What did Michelle say? When, when they, they go, go low, low, we go high. Yeah. And I feel like I usually <laughs> hit the flow, but <laughs> I hit the flow if needed. But I'm just trying to keep it as professional as possible. Yeah. I'm gonna read you respectfully. Yeah, but you I gotta learn like, respectful yes. reads in this business. Oh yeah, I love that. Okay, as a newer mm-hmm. agent, don't be afraid to ask somebody. Yeah. Like, ask somebody how you should handle the situation because I would hate for you to kill a relationship that you never know can affect your career in the long run mm-hmm. when you could have handled it in a in a different in a Absolutely. better way. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So don't be afraid to ask those around you if it's your broker. Mentor, your other realtor friends, like sure. DM people, you know, on Instagram, like some people DM you back. Yeah. Like get that advice on how to handle those tough situations because they could, I feel like they could make or break your career Absolutely, as an agent yeah. and your reputation. I'm so glad you said that because I'm even thinking like the the deal that I mentioned, I was on a team at that time and I remember it, it got bad with the lender. Like I was threatening to sue the lender because I felt like they just weren't doing what, what was in my client's best interest. And I actually feel like it was their fault that my client lost her earnest money. Yeah. And I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't have known what to do. That was my first time ever experiencing that. So I Mm -hmm. think that's really good to, if you don't have that community there, I mean, there's a ton of resources online and groups you can join if you don't necessarily have those people in person Mm -hmm. who can help you. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, build a community for sure. It's really important. Yeah, the Chicago in me feels like I have to say this. There's a thin line between being respectful and being ran over. Okay. Okay. I think on one hand, 
we have to be respectful of the people in this business, the people who have, you know, trailblazed and made it possible for us to be here mm -hmm. closing these deals at these high capacities. However, don't ever allow those same trailblazers to like play blow you. you over and play mm -hmm. in your face. Right. Unacceptable. Not going to happen. Not now. Not ever. Get somebody else to do it. Okay. Yeah. It's just a thin line between that. And I think sometimes like you do have to be careful of your words, but speak up for what you know is right. And when you know what you know. Mm -hmm. Stand on that business. Like, if you know that you're doing the right thing, if you know that person is acting not in the best interest of everyone in the deal, mm -hmm. call them out how you see it respectfully, but stand your ground and don't let anybody, like, convince you you don't know what you're talking about when mm -hmm. you know you do. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we are all adults. Yep. Hello. Regardless if you got your license in 2011, I got mine in 2023, I don't care. Mm -hmm. We're all adults. We're all individuals. And we all learn the same Thing. Yep. We, we all got the, the same, same credentials. We got access to the same Hello. information. So like the realtor. Said, yeah. yeah. The realtor. That's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't ever let somebody play you. So yeah. That's in good. the end, always act in the best interest of your client, whether on the buying side or the selling side. You know, always stand your ground. Always do what what you know is going to be the right thing and don't anybody like tear you down yeah because I, I mean the cool. hard deals are going to come it's gonna like be hard deals and keep inevitable coming. And okay keep coming. yeah and keep it's coming. gonna be so good when you get through them though yeah so don't have a little sure. bruises but you'll be fine yeah you're gonna be banged up for sure <laughs> yeah but that's all right we back, we back up we back up yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay y'all that was quick advice hope y'all enjoyed that now we're gonna go into our favorite segment of the that. day with who Ashley Lorray, our rules are bad. Hold on, she said, with who? <laughs> she be feeling like Y'all ladies are getting, it. hey, as the time goes on, you more. ladies are getting spicier and spicier. <laughs> Y'all are funny. Y'all make me choke. Um, so, it. yeah, if this is your first time tuning into our show, we have this segment called The Question of the Day, where we take questions from you guys, our audience, and you can submit a question via Instagram at Real Talk Atlanta. Be sure to follow us or shoot us an email at realtalkatlpod at gmail.com. Okay, so today's question is a fun one. So I want to know, this is, this is a question for me. Ooh. If y'all could meet anyone, who would it be, dead or alive? Oh. Be anyone in person? Yeah. Like celebrity-wise? Yeah, anyone. Dead or alive? Dead or alive? I guess. Oh, that changes things for me. Throw a monkey wrench in it. <laughs> Does that make it harder? <laughs> I think yeah. so. Yeah, let me see. Mm. <laughs> who would I want to meet? Okay, I, I would say this. I'm a simple girl, like... <laughs> <laughs> Don't too much move me. Um, I think if I could meet anybody. No, sorry. Be somebody from Chicago. Chicago. Oh my I know God. everybody from to, Chicago. Y'all know what I'm about to say. If I could meet anybody. I know what you about to say. Yeah. No, I'm not about to say that. Oh. Who? Now, okay, if I can meet anybody alive, it's going to be Barack Obama. Right. I love Barack Obama. My president man. is black. And his wife. My Lambo. Oh, I would, and if it's somebody dead. <laughs> I would like to meet Martin Luther King Jr. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's something about the activists for me. The people who make a difference for me. Okay. <laughs> oh, I, I like, like that. that. I want to do something, you know. You been to his house in Atlanta? Oh, no, I've had fire. You ain't never heard? Oh, I probably did when I was little, younger. This is great. <laughs> Martin Luther King Jr. I think I that's a good one, though. That's I like good. that. Yeah. <laughs> we rock with him. I like the activists. Yeah. The people who make a difference mm. in this world. That's your type, huh? Okay, well, I'm a... <laughs> I'm gonna play off of that. If I could meet anyone who is no longer here, I think it would be Nipsey. Oh my mm, god! Okay. Yes. Like I like because I'm thinking one. about That's if I good. meet you, then I got to sit and talk to you. And like some people, I don't really care to talk to. Yeah, like, I definitely think I want to say that I like people. He uses his word prolific. I'm really into that. I think he's very like you know forward thinking, just all mm -hmm. that stuff. Mm -hmm. The whole concept of buying a blog, buying up the hood. Like, That's a good one. Yeah, I know me. I, I love I my roots and where I come from. So I would love. I think that somebody who I would like love to pick their brain. Yeah, alive. <laughs> Can we just come back? To I feel like we in Atlanta. We be seeing celebrities all the time. Yeah. We see them all the time. Yeah. And I ain't gonna, never mind. I'll tell y'all this story another time. But go ahead. <laughs> Me? This might sound so cheesy. Who is it? I don't know who it is yet. I was gonna say my soulmate. That's who I would like to. You want to meet a man? I don't know where he is. She ain't looking for I'm a looking man. I'm looking for. I'm, I'm looking. looking for. If you actually saw a man, you're watching this. Call her. She's I'm, ready to meet you. Like I know, I want to meet alive. Who? I really want to meet her and go to the club with her. Glorilla, if you're watching this. Oh, okay. I yeah. feel That's like me and Gloria fitting. will like yeah, really kick it off. Gloria, hallelujah. Gloria, hallelujah. <laughs> I feel like me and her will like really yeah, kick it. Ball. Like, yeah. I started to say Young Miami. Okay. It's salty. But it's kind of mm. like, you know, I wanted to go to 
But I would love to meet them. I feel like I would have a ball. I would love to go out to the club with JT. My JT. You and Carisha. JT gonna be JT gonna be in the corner, and you might be in the corner with her. Because uh, anyway, you know we call her River. They do call JT. me JT, but that's, that's so funny. Side side. Now I feel like I gotta actually think of a person. Like I don't know, maybe like because <laughs> your soulmate is crazy. You know who I would like to hang out with though? Mm. Like Rihanna. I love her. Okay. She seems I can cool. See that. Right she so seems pretty laid back. So, okay. I'm just playing. Yeah, Rihanna or like SZA. I mm. like her too. I feel like SZA would be like a vibe to, me, to hang out with. Okay. Yeah. So we That's obviously good. need to like have a concert like and meet all these people. Yeah, so basically. Yeah. Like, mm. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Love it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> per usual, we appreciate y'all tuning in every single week and helping us make our podcast the success that it is. Feel free to like. Share, comment, do all the things to run those numbers up. Yep. Yes. Because we're trying to go up 2023. Oh, and we are because we got some stuff coming. Com- we got some stuff coming. It's up. I'm so, excited, y'all. Can't we keep that. saying it, but it's coming. Yeah, real. right. They probably like, what is it? Y'all it's like, y'all real. dragging this one out. Just no, be ready. Really got something. I'm excited. Just be ready. Coming. Just be ready. But until then, Nika we'll see y'all next week. Yeah. 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 We will see y'all next time. Bye, Bye guys.